So the invitation, the challenge, the experiment, the grand adventure today is radical honesty. Radical honesty means speaking the truth no matter what pain might be involved. And of course, we can't do that on our own. But the challenge, if you're up for it, is ask God, God, would you help me today uh, simply speak the truth with my entire being? Scott Peck uh, was a brilliant writer, psychiatrist who came to faith in Christ as an adult, I think in his 40s. And he wrote someplace, mental health is dedication to reality at any cost. It's something of the flip side of what Carl Jung once said, that neurosis is always a substitute for legitimate suffering. Because life is difficult and reality is painful and the truth is often hard for us and so we don't want to look at it. But mental health now, from a spiritual or a Christian or biblical perspective, we might think about that as shalom, uh, the peace and well-being and flourishing presence of God in our minds. Mental health is dedication. If you've been, if you've been on this journey through uh, renovation of the heart, you'll remember that little acronym VIM, vision, intention, method. Dedication flows out of intention. It is a commitment I make. Mental health to flourish in my mind is to be fully committed to reality. Now, reality is simply truth. Reality is what God knows to be real or true. And then that comes at any cost, and that's the problem. Uh, generally, I am not willing to speak the truth if the cost of it is too great. And so we have this enormous problem, and that problem is deeply inside of us. Part of what we're going to come to and what Dallas writes today and the reason that we need the gift of radical honesty is because our greatest problem are not the things that happen to us. They are what happens in us. They are what we choose. And we keep ourselves from seeing that. Um, Max Black was a writer from a long time ago. Uh, Harry Frankfurt's a Princeton philosopher and he knows that uh, Black talked about being a humbug and he distinguished a humbug from a liar. A liar is somebody who knows the truth but wants to keep it from you. A humbug is somebody who misrepresents himself. You might think about a politician who says, uh, our nation is the greatest nation on the earth. God led to its founding. And that may or may not be true. The politician doesn't really care if it's true. The politician just wants you to think that the politician believes it. He's just concerned with if there's a phoniness to him old saying, how do you know when a politician is lying? Because his lips are moving. But that's not restricted to the sphere of politics. Woodrow Wilson was the president of Princeton University and left it to go into politics, eventually becoming a two-term president of the United States. Somebody asked him one time, why did you leave the academy? Why did you stop being at Princeton? And he said, because I got tired of the politics. And of course, it's also not restricted to the academy. Uh, we do this kind of thing every day. I show up late for something. Oh, the traffic was really bad, I say. When I know the reality is, I just didn't bother to leave with enough time to get there on time. But I don't want to say that about myself because that would make me sound undisciplined or lazy or arrogant or like I don't care that the people uh, who are there have been waiting for me, all of which is true. But it sounds much more polite. It is humbuggery to say the traffic was bad. And I might convince myself that the traffic really was bad, so I'm justified in saying it. And then I become a little less truthful and a little less truthful and a little less truthful. And, and the problem is not what is outside of me. It is what is inside of me. And pastors wrestle with this. I remember one time a long time ago, speaking at a church where there were some layoffs that had to take place with the staff. I had newly arrived there. And when I was making this announcement, I said, you know, I hate to be the one 
up here having to say this and I kind of conjured up a picture in myself of me being very compassionate and brokenhearted for people having to leave and that emotion kind of got into my voice and I didn't say to myself I'm going to try to manufacture artificial emotion to fool these people but my mind went in that direction because it was a habitual part of what is just simply inside my body to try to make myself look better and other than I actually am. Donald Winnicott was a psychiatrist back in the 60s and he used to talk about the false self. He introduced that language. The person that I construct in order to meet what I take to be the reality around me in a more effective or more ego satisfying way. And the only solution, the only healing to that is radical honesty. There's a remarkable book by Anna Lemke. It's called Dopamine Nation about addiction of all kinds in our day. And she writes about uh, how every major religion and code of ethics has included honesty as essential to its moral teachings. And anybody that goes through recovery relies on truth telling as as essential for sustained mental and physical health. Mental health is dedication to reality at all costs, at any cost. But she notes, we have a real problem with that. Children begin lying as early as age two. The smarter the kid, the more likely they are to lie and the better they are at it. Lying tends to decrease between three and 14. On the other hand, adults are capable of more sophisticated antisocial lies than children as the ability to plan and remember becomes more advanced. And when we hide, then we lie, and then we get divorced from reality, and we face our great problems. She goes on to talk about radical honesty, telling the truth about things large and small, especially when doing so exposes our foibles and entails consequences, is essential. Not just to recovery from addiction. Every addict knows what it is to lie and dissemble and hide and pretend, and that a step into recovery requires uh, humiliating honesty. Fearless and searching moral end of the story. Confess to God ourselves and another the exact nature of our wrongs. Uh, Honesty promotes awareness of our actions. Radical honesty fosters intimate human connections. Radical honesty leads to a truthful autobiography which holds us accountable, not just to our present but our future selves. She talks about how too often we offer other people empathy Oh, that must be really hard for you without accountability. And that empathy without accountability loses clarity and prevents maturity. Telling the truth, she goes on, is contagious. And it it creates genuine intimacy with other people, or at least the possibility for it. So today, radical honesty. And that brings me to page 243 in Renovation of the Heart. Dallas Willard writes uh, about what is our great need for Jesus. He says, Now one cannot lay a satisfactory foundation for spiritual formation or growth in grace by simply approaching people in terms of the trouble they are in. I do not say that felt needs are to be disregarded, but in human affairs, the presenting problem, therapists will often talk about that. People come in, a couple says the presenting problem is their anxious child, but it's really their marriage that's a mess. Or a husband may say his presenting problem is uh, his wife, but the real problem is his narcissism. The presenting problem that needs to be fixed now is really the real problem. One should, of course, be sympathetic with people who are lonely, guilt-ridden, and incapable of dealing with life, and so on. But these are not their problem. Their problem is that they have rejected God for whatever reason and have chosen to live life on their own. They have not surrendered their will to Him. They do not want to do what God says to do, but what they think is best. And they are lost because of that. They do not know what their real needs are and do not think of themselves as rebels and outlaws who must radically change because they are not acceptable to God. They do not think they need the grace of God for radical transformation of who they are, but that they just need a little help. They are good people, or so it seems to them. 
I rebel against God because every moment when I don't want to tell the truth or my body has become so habituated to it, I can lie with my eyebrows. I can lie with my tone of voice. I make myself seem, look, appear to be more caring, better than I really am. And the radical truth of me is I'm not. I need God's help. I can't. I can't. So today, radical honesty. Today, mental health, shalom, peace, is dedication to reality, whatever the cost. And the good news is that it's there we find grace. The good news is that it's there in the brokenness and humiliation and pain of the wreck that I make of my own life and of people that I seek to love. It's there I find God because it is God and His love that is at the foundation of all reality. Radical honesty today. today. Gonna be tough. God help us. Guard your heart. See you next time.